Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, as the thumbnail says, we're gonna be assembling this new press I bought from Harbor Freight Tools. I'm in the middle of a project right now and I just couldn't get the studs out of my spacers for my wheels. So instead of taking it to the shop and paying them to do it, I decided I might as well just invest in this press tool so I can actually use it, do suspension work in the future for bushings and other things. And I figured it's gonna be a useful tool around the garage. So stay tuned. So this particular press I got was the actual 12 ton press that they have over at Harbor Freight. They offer like three types of press. They offer like an A-frame one that's kind of a bench top. I think it's only six tons. And they offer this one which is an H-frame and it's 12 tons. And they actually offer another H-frame that was 20 tons. When I headed over to Harbor Freight, I was initially wanting that 20 ton. And then I looked at it though it was side by side with this guy and just the sheer size of the 20 ton plus the big ass cylinder and everything. I was like, man, I don't have anywhere to put that in this garage. This thing's gonna be pretty tight for the space I have already. I'm gonna have to tuck it away in a corner, but the 20 ton was much bigger. It was like $80 more. It would have been useful in the long run if I had to do major stuff or I had to use it all the time. But for my occasional use and suspension work, I think the 12 ton will work fine. Plus I drove this car over there and I couldn't fit the boxes from the 20 ton in my car anyways. The 12 ton was pretty small and it came with this thin box right here which is the two side rails and it came with a second box over here which is the actual jack pump and the rest of the cross rails. So it was pretty easy. It's less than 100 pounds and it fit in the car. So we got everything unboxed and it's a pretty straightforward install. Pretty much everything is here. It looks just like the picture. You get all your screws. You could probably just follow the picture and get all the screws in, but if you wanna follow the directions, you go ahead and follow the directions. Basically the first thing you need to do is do the feet, which is the bottom here, the cross section, and then the forward backward section, and the supports for those, which are those four little dog bones right there. And once you do that, then you can put the side rails on the side and then start doing the columns. This thing basically uses a bottle jack as your jack mechanism. And this looks exactly like one of the generic bottle jacks that they sell over there. The feet might be a little bit different. It reminds me of the $35 bottle jacks they sell at Harbor Freight already. All right, we got this baby assembled and everything looks like it works properly. I had to wipe down the bottle jack with some super clean just because it was covered with a bunch of hydraulic oil and everything on it during shipping. But the assembly went pretty easily. Uh, the only thing I did differently was this thing right here, the eye bolt only came with one bolt, no washer. So I added a bolt on the top and the bottom just to sandwich it in. And then I also added a washer on both ends too, just to have a washer. As you can see on the time-lapse, I had some trouble on aligning this thing up here. The bottle jack actually goes in one direction. Same with this crossbar, it only goes in one direction. If you actually wanna see the both labels facing you and have the arm that you could pump over here, you actually have to turn it correctly. But overall, the finish and everything and the powder coating on this metallic gunmetal is very nice for a $150 or $170 tool right here that we have. The only thing that we had issues with was, like I said, the leaking from the shipping of the actual bottle jack. But other than that, everything else came together pretty nicely. The bolts and everything threaded on, they're all metric. We're gonna go ahead and test this out and see if we got actually pop these studs out of my wheel spacer that I've been having a bunch of problems with. I've tried everything as far as hammering it and freezing it and everything and it doesn't budge. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this thing to pop it out. No 
Oh yeah, like butter. Which is much better than trying to hammer it out. We'll go ahead and just finish them all off and get all these things out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and just add some wheels to the bottom of this new press so I can actually roll it around my shop in my garage. So I got these on Amazon, they were like 15 bucks and they were like one of the highly reviewed preferred ones but they're just basic nylon wheels. They've got a nice soft rubber so they don't scratch up my floor and they bolt in perfectly to the actual cross beams at the bottom. So we just go ahead and bolt these on. I'm gonna add an extra washer on the bottom so it has a little bit of cushion between this and the bottom of the rail and then the lock washer goes on top. So we should be good there with just those two washers. Go ahead and put that first washer in there, tuck it in. I've got it on the actual rail so I can use it to lift it a little bit. Then I'm gonna add another washer on top with the lock washer. All right, got it on here. Now we could actually roll it around the shop and the garage, make it easier for us to work. You can see I moved everything down here. When I'm actually storing this thing or not using it, I'm just gonna keep it down here. That way I don't have the top heavy weight on top. And then what I did was I ended up putting a screw here to hold the plates onto here when I'm not using it. Uh, this thing actually had two holes already drilled in it from the factory, so it was perfect for using this little bolt and nut just to keep this on here to store it. In addition, on top here, uh, the bar for the jack, I just strapped it on here with just two little bungee cords. That was the best place for me to put it. It doesn't really fit in between here. On the bigger 20 ton, this thing's a little bit wider and the stick fits in there, but for our case, it only fits up here. I was thinking about maybe doing something on the side here, having a little sleeve and mounting it down here, but I don't want it to go all the way down there too far where it interferes with the cross bolts right here. So it'd have to be either between the cross bolts so it doesn't interfere or above it. One other upgrade I wanna do is these little bars down here. They just kind of sit there and they can slide all the way through. I've seen on YouTube where somebody welded some nuts onto here to keep it from going all the way through and it just stops right here. So I might do something like that. I don't have a welder, so I might have to maybe JB weld it or epoxy it to see if it holds long term. Here's the last upgrade I did to the bottle jack, which is a little release valve. This thing's nice. You could do this with your hands instead of taking the pipe. The only thing this thing needs is a little set screw right there on the tip to keep it tight in here, but overall it's gonna work perfectly fine for my setup. I don't plan to use this too often in the shop, doing stuff around here anyways, uh, but if I ever did, I might consider upgrading this to one of those pneumatic air jacks that you actually either have a pedal or a little handheld air thing that actually does the pumping for you. It's a lot faster and quicker, but for my purposes, I think this is good enough. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this video on assembling this new press I got from my garage. As you can see, it's a pretty simple install. It's pretty affordable too at Harbor Freight. I think regular price on this is like 170. I got lucky this weekend at Harbor Freight and they had a 10% coupon that actually worked on the central machinery. Usually the 20% off coupons and those other coupons don't work on the central machinery, but this weekend they had an exception for the 10% one. So I got this for 10% off so it ended up being like $17 off the regular price which wasn't bad for what I needed for so now I can actually do suspension and bushings and other projects with this now if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up if you guys want to stay on top of all my different DIY content go ahead and subscribe to your channel remember guys for all these different projects if I can do it you guys can do it I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll talk to you guys next time